Okay, let's talk measuring an event. Uh, typically, what might these events be? Uh, there are five classic examples that we'll come across in the future. One of them is turning on a light bulb. Very exciting. The collision between two particles. The passing of light through a point in space. An explosion. Or, now this one's quite complicated sounding, but it's really straightforward. The coincidence of a clock hand with a marker on the brim of a clock. For example, when the second hand passes the three marker. That is an event that we would typically be interested in. If we're going to register or record one of these events, we would need to record four coordinate values. These are typically, this is a typical record of an event. So we would record spatially an X coordinate, a Y coordinate and a Z coordinate. And then we would also record a time coordinate. Now it could be that we have somebody else with a completely different reference frame to us recording exactly the same event but there's no there's no requirement for their measurements to be the same as ours. As a matter of fact they're almost guaranteed to be different. So we are going to work our way towards being able to convert these coordinates for event A to these coordinates of event A via a physics that is the same for both observers. Anyway, back to this idea. If we are in a situation where we need to record three space coordinates and a time coordinate for every event, we need to have some sort of imaginative uh, way of doing that. So I give you uh, my array of clocks. There's an L in there. Uh, we have, you have to imagine this in three dimensions. We've got X dimension, Y dimension, we'll have a Z dimension. And at every point of intersection, we'll add a small clock. And this could be where we are, and the clock could be at uh, one o'clock there. Now, if we're going to position clocks in all of these places and an event happens somewhere over here, even at the speed of light, it takes an appreciable amount of time for that event to reach us. So in order to record that event, we need to synchronize these clocks. And it's not just a case of you have somebody manning each of these clocks and you go right, ready, steady, three, two, one, and this is zero. Because by the time you've said that, and that signal for synchronization travels across your array, these ones are pressing a zero when yours has made an appreciable tick forward. So you need to have all of your assistants uh, aware that they're not setting their clock to zero, they're setting their clock to, not zero, but a little bit further on from zero, depending on how far away they are. So if these are uh, radial distances away, here we have one, two, three, four radial distances away. Then we need to factor in that radial distance so that when the message to synchronize this clock arrives, we can add on the time that has passed in order for that message of synchronization reaches this clock. Long story short, that was quite complicated, is we want all of these clocks to be magically synchronized to, so that they are all running at exactly the same time. This way, when an explosion or a coincidence of any, any kind happens in this particular area, we can record one, two, three, uh, one, two, three along the x-axis, one, uh, one, two on the y-axis, zero on the z-axis because I haven't drawn it, and then we just record whatever this clock was saying at that particular moment in time. So the next video is going to be about the relativity of simultaneity.